Hello everyone and welcome to Paula Soapbox Live. My guest today is an international booking coach. She created the Linden Technique, which helps actors learn how to book the gig. The first printing of her book, The Linden Technique, a 15 guideline map to booking, sold out in just three and a half weeks. And in addition to all of that, she is an actress, producer, director, and writer with 100 IMDB credits to her name. It's my pleasure to welcome back to the show, Amy Linden. Hi. <laughs> Hi, Amy. Thank you so much for coming by today. I know you've got a busy day today. Yes, I got a red carpet tonight. And yes. <laughs> yeah, I, I never know how to stand, you know? It's like, where do you put your right. hands at the red carpet? And you never want to look chunky, so you want to stand up straight. And I mean, I think there's a whole art to the red carpet. Yeah, there is. There's a whole separate art to the red carpet. You can <laughs> tell by just watching it. I know. I know people just like it's, it's almost like they know where to put their face. So I, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna work out some new skills tonight. Yeah, put your hand on your hip and. <laughs> yeah, 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 there's one, I think it's like a a pageant stance. It's like. like yes. <laughs> Blow a kiss. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, and they do the that over the shoulder thing like that, you know. That's yeah, what, yeah. Yeah, I'll figure yeah, it out. It's, like, <laughs> it's like a it's like a runway walk or something almost. Yeah, yeah, but I think there should be like a class in teaching you how to do that. There really um, should. Maybe that maybe that should be your next book. Oh no, no, do no. That. <laughs> no, I only teach what I know. Yeah. <laughs> 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 well, before we get into why you're going to be walking the red carpet tonight, let's talk a little bit about the Linden Technique. Okay. Um, this is something you created to help actors learn how to book the gig because you were once uh, one of these actors who you had the training and the talent, but you were kind of stuck not knowing exactly what you were doing wrong in terms of booking. Well, like I tell my students, I am you. So I, I think I'm pretty much the only coach in all over the world that has 100 IMDb credits that are out in the world with my students. Right. So I'm walking the walk and talking the talk with them. And so it's everything that I say to them is really relevant and mm -hmm. um, applicable to what's actually going on right now. Yeah. Like what, what it's like in the room. Because I could teach you how to book. I mean, I could teach you my 15 guideline map to booking. I could teach you that. But unless you're out there in the world seeing what the room is like, um, you could psych yourself out, you know? So yeah. these, guidelines, these guidelines were built to keep you safe in the room because when I came out to Los Angeles, I had so much training, so much training. And I couldn't book because I didn't know how. Yeah. So how did you figure out that this was a problem with not knowing how to book as opposed to maybe something totally out of your control? Because I'm sure a lot of actors think, well, I know how to book. That's not my problem. It's something else. Well, that's the thing. They do, Once they realize that it has nothing to do with your talent and everything to do with your approach, that's when they start mm -hmm. working. And so yeah. basically the technique uh, was my technique when I started booking a lot of television and um and movies obviously and and i i'm basically teaching everybody what i'm already doing right right so, and like you said you're currently out there and you're still doing it and yeah yeah and the thing is is that you know so much of the booking process has nothing to do with your talent you have to know how to compete like an athlete you know and a lot of people yeah. don't look at it as a competition they think well i'm talented um they'll know that but it's not true at all. How you book a job is not going to be how you shoot a job. Yeah. So um, you were teaching students this technique before you ever wrote the book because it took you a while to write the book to actually yeah. put it in. Hand I, I just came out with the audio book, so you can get that on Amazon, which is the updated yeah. book. In December, I came out with the audio book, which is it's an extended version of me basically beating you up for 90 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> My students, they leave class, they go, Amy, my butt hurts, but I feel good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, you're, you know, you're not from Chicago. I was teaching. Yeah. Chicago. Yeah. Uh, Bravo Talent Management brought me out there, and, um, and that's the second time I went out to Chicago. I was in Phoenix. I'm going to Nashville. I go all over the world teaching the technique, helping actors everywhere on how to yeah. book a job. So been, how long have you been doing these workshops in Chicago? 
Um, probably eight months. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Great people. Oh my goodness. Chicago is, is great. Beautiful, beautiful city. And there's a lot of TV shows out there now. Yeah, I've noticed that the it's grown quite a bit in terms of uh, that. So, yes, I, I, that's why you don't need to be in Los Angeles or New York in order to work. You can be anywhere, and so that's why yeah. I am everywhere teaching people how to get jobs everywhere. Yeah, you're right about that, and I've noticed also. Uh, you mentioned Nashville. Uh, you know the show Nashville films in Nashville oh. and then there's a lot of yeah so there's a and there's a lot of music videos that's constantly filming in Nashville so I'm, I'm constantly hearing about you know movies filming in Franklin which is near Nashville and that sort of thing so you're right about that there a lot of the major cities in the United States it doesn't have to be Los Angeles or New York they're all it's everywhere. It's in Atlanta. And, you know, funny story. I have to tell you this. Um, while I was in Chicago, I got it. Uh, my Atlanta agent sent me an audition for Star. And I, they said it, it's a fast turnaround. And I wasn't even going to be back in L.A. So I was in the bathroom selfieing a selfie. I was doing a self-tape <laughs> selfie, cutting out the <laughs> person's lines at 1245 in the morning, okay, by myself. Oh in the bathroom <laughs> you can get it <laughs> by the next day crazy oh really wow crazy. oh i mean you're, i am you're lost. It's all of you guys <laughs> what yeah you really, yeah you really are you're out there in the trench in the trenches and you're you know you're you're still working as an actress you're not just telling people how to how to book you're still booking so yeah yeah you know and i have a movie coming out um called the unmiracle that i actually shot in chicago um, and it's with uh, Stephen Baldwin um, and Kevin Sorbo, and it's a faith-based movie, and it's so beautiful. I hope everybody can see it when it comes out. I believe it's coming out next month. Next so look month. Is it coming out? I, Is it coming I, I, out? I play Stephen Baldwin's wife, so I got to work oh, with him. Lucky a you. <laughs> it doesn't matter which Baldwin, right? <laughs> right, yeah. Yeah, lucky you. I, I noticed that that you were. We talked about it a little bit when you were here before, um, but so is it coming out at the theater? Is it coming out on DVD next month? Um, I I believe it might be the theaters because they um, hooked up with one of the top Christian um, distribution companies. Good. It's so funny as an actor, you don't know these things. Yeah. You come out later. Yeah. You do it, and you hope that the world sees it. Like, I mean, I did a great movie with Chris Pratt, okay? Let's talk about that first. Yeah, Cursed nope. Part 3. Yes. So oh, you're on <laughs> it. You're on it. And yeah. that never came out. And that was his first movie, and I was starring in it, you know? What? He had a smaller role, and it was his first movie. And I was like, you know, that's right. As an actor, you, you hope that everything that you do gets seen by the world. Um, but you have to just keep doing it, and eventually the world will know you. Yeah. But, I mean, the world knows him. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, he just kind of blew up, so. He deserves it, though. He's so talented, and what you see is exactly who he is. That's good. That's good. It's always yeah. it's always good when somebody who is real and genuine makes it big. I would much rather see that as, you know. Exactly. <laughs> He's our people, Paula. He's he, right. <laughs> <laughs> well, you 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 keep me informed about the miracle because I'm going to watch it either way, whether it's in the theater or on DVD. So yeah, I'll give it to you. Yeah, I've been looking forward to it. The trailer is amazing. So anybody watching right now, if you haven't watched the trailer, check it out. It's it looks like a very powerful film. Yeah, it, it really, really was. And, and it was great working with Steven, you know? I mean, he's, he's the consummate professional, you know? I, I didn't have a scene yeah. with Kevin Sorbo, but I did meet him. He's a really nice guy. Yeah, yeah but he seems like a really nice guy, and Steven does too, so. Yeah, they're, they're just, they're good people. And, and, you know, and the filmmakers uh, really went all out putting this together. And so it took two years. Yeah. To well, I, well, I know we talked about it a couple of years ago, and, and I've, kind of kept an eye on it a little bit off and on, yeah, since then to, to find out when it was coming out because I wanted to see it. So I'm glad to hear that it's getting a release soon. Yes, it's getting released. <laughs> good, good. <laughs> I can't wait to see it. 
So back to the Linden technique for a second. Um, you released the book, I guess, about eight years ago or something. Yes, it was exactly eight years ago. Okay. So how has your client list grown just from publishing the book? Wow. Well, put it to you this way. I had uh, 40 people in class on Monday night. I did 20 scenes and that was just getting off a plane from Chicago three hours later. Okay. Yeah. So, I mean, I have now 42 network series regulars. My, my Karen White, if you guys look mm -hmm. her up, K-A-R-Y-N White, she was a famous, famous disco singer in the 70s and 80s. Oh, um, yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah. She is starring in um, a show shooting in Atlanta. So she moved to Atlanta, and she's been working ever since, ever since she moved. Yeah. Well, yeah, and that's an, yeah, I, I noticed that uh, somebody I interviewed a few months ago lives in Atlanta, and they were talking about how the film industry has grown in Atlanta. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know if they still have the same film incentives, because, you know, it, it depends on the state, on, on what they're going to give film people. I think California should be a little nicer to people shooting, because then more people will stay here. Yeah. Yeah, well, it's, you know, if there's other options, then. Yeah, exactly, and then they're going to go. <laughs> then they're going to go, yeah. <laughs> Especially if it's somewhere closer to home and they need to be close to home or something, you know. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's just less money, but um, it's just it just seems natural. I mean, years ago, people used to go to Canada because they have yeah. tax incentives there. And so, you know, but I do want to be on The Walking Dead, so I'd like to go to Atlanta. <laughs> do you watch yeah, that show? Yeah. I haven't yet, but everyone keeps telling me about it. It's one of those that's kind of on my list of shows oh, that yeah. I need to check out. So, There's so you know, many shows to watch now, right? Well, and it's not just on TV anymore. It's the web, it's Amazon, it's Netflix, Hulu, and it's just, you know, there's <laughs> there's yeah. not enough hours in the day to watch all of them. But, yeah, that's definitely on my list of top ten shows that I need to check out. Yeah, um, well, you can't you know, keep up with all of them. You're the Walking Dead, too, which was before The Walking Dead, so the zombies are a lot more moist. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> I will take your word on that. <laughs> I mean, a zombie is a zombie, but they're a lot more moist. <laughs> All right. <laughs> You've just piqued my interest. I might have to check that out sooner than I thought. Oh, it was the moist zombie comment. Okay, Paul. It was the moist zombie comment. <laughs> Sounds a little gross, but... <laughs> <laughs> but again, morbid curiosity, so... Um, well, as I mentioned, the first printing of your book, The Linden Technique, it sold out in three and a half weeks. So clearly you were fulfilling a need that had not yet been met. Well, um, my students had been telling me for years because I was already teaching like 15 years before that time. Yeah. Yeah. 14 right. years or something like that before that. And they were like, uh, when are you going to have a book, Amy? And so um, I actually, um, I had an outline of a book and then I used my timeshare in Vegas and I went to Vegas for over a week and I wrote the book there. So I would write for seven hours and gamble for six. And that was that. <laughs> well, that you know, life is all about balance. So, <laughs> see, as long as I got my priorities straight, right? Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so that's when the book was, was put together. And, and it's, it's, I mean, I sold, I sell books to Sweden. Um, I, I, I have a, Vimeo on demand video that I made a couple years ago and uh, yeah. a guy from Cambodia bought it. So it's just really ridiculously exciting how people all over the world, I'm, I'm able to help them with their dream, you know, yeah. like years ago when I was coming up, there was a guy by the name of Michael Shirtliff, but, mm -hmm. uh, but his stuff is so outdated, you know, and I'm so happy that I'm able to step in now and and fulfill a need in the acting community and help actors uh not waste time yeah did you ever think that it would get to be as big as it is now no i mean i'm even doing a reality show about it that's how big it is <laughs> yeah let's let's talk about that the linden experience i'm very curious about that 
Well, I decided that, you know, um, it's not only the experience with how well my people are doing, but I don't think people have really seen what it's like uh, to be an actor and what, and, and what that's all about. Um, so it covers that. It covers my, my wacky family um, and friends. And it also covers, you know, um, my um, producer, Tierra Peters, is going to be at the screening tonight shooting. So it covers me as a director because the movie is up okay. for best U.S. short and she's up for best actress. So it's covering that tonight. Um, and, and it's, and it's just covering, um, you know, the places that I go and the people that I meet like yesterday, um, CJ Jones came. If anybody saw baby driver, the movie, yeah, I haven't seen it yet. Yeah. He was in my office yesterday doing a consult. Yeah, and so that is going to be on the show. No, no, because I didn't know he was coming. Otherwise I would have shot it. Oh. But anyway, <laughs> it, it, <laughs> Everything's already shot, but I will be a whore about it. I will tell you that. Um, okay. We're editing, <laughs> we're editing the first 13 episodes right now. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, so, so when do you expect that to be YouTube. out? It's going to be on YouTube, so you'll see it there. Uh, yeah. So when do you expect it to be finished before everyone can see it? Oh, you're going to have to talk to Tiara. She's got to get going. I cracked that, crack that whip. I really do. <laughs> it takes a while because the first, the opener... And the first episode is crucial because it sets the tone for every other episode. So we're really perfecting the editing of the first episode because it sets the style. But I mean, I'm having, I, I had um, lunch with um, uh, Theo Caesar, who's the CEO of 90210 Talent, you know, mm -hmm. Kardashian style, you know, at a restaurant. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and well, so I already, yeah. go ahead. We, we I was say, gonna say that I was. I'm already subscribed to the channel, so I'm, oh, yeah. I'm so, ready whenever. Yeah. Yeah. No, but it's gonna be a brand new channel called the Linda. Oh, okay. So I'll let you know okay. when. Yeah, it's not the my channel. Yeah. Subscribe to the Linden Experience channel already. Shut up. Nope. Oh my God! Yeah, I really am. Crazy. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, so hopefully, I'll yeah, until I put something up. What were you gonna say? I was just gonna say, hopefully, it'll be out soon, so yeah. I can watch it and share it with everyone. Yes, I will tell you about it when it's out. Thank you. Absolutely, of course. Well, you mentioned that you have over forty series regulars right now, which is amazing. Yes. Um, Forty-two. And that doesn't, count, that doesn't even count the people that got another series. That just counts the people oh. that got the series. And I'm not counting the additional series like Chris Chris D'Elia that that was on Whitney, and then he was on. Um, yeah, I love him. He's hilarious. Oh, well, he was my student. Yeah, so I'm not counting all the shows he's been in. You know. Yeah, yeah, he's been in quite a few, and and a quarter of those students have only used the Linden technique. Yes, I'm really proud about that, I have to say. And so yeah. it's, a and that it's a misnomer that you have to train in a hundred different places in order to make it. You just need to tell the best story and that's what the technique does. Yeah. It teaches you and, how to and, tell the best story. What? And I was just gonna say that includes uh, Crystal Khalil, right, the Emmy winner from Young and the Raceless. Yes, do you know, she. She called me up um, right after she booked that because I coached her to book that. And she called me up while she was on set because they get like 30 pages a day. And with this technique, yeah, yeah. you're off book like that. You're off book fast. Like in my class, they, they just go bam, the script goes down. They're off book eight, nine pages. And yeah. they just got it a couple of hours before. So um, she thanked me for the technique because there's no rehearsal in soap opera. No. And there's no second take usually. Yeah, exactly. There's no second take, so you have to get it on the first take. And so um, they, there's a blocking rehearsal, but that's about it. And yeah. so the technique was great because she became self-sufficient and she wasn't dependent on somebody else to make her scenes work. Yeah. So she was very grateful. She's a really nice girl. And I yeah. almost worked with her, too. She left one year from the show. She took, like, a one-year sabbatical. And her yeah. stand-in her stand for the year, and that was the year I booked it. And I had a scene with her stand-in. So upset. Yeah, yeah. I was gonna, I was gonna ask you about that because I knew that you had been on the Young and the Restless at one point. If you had worked with her, but I didn't know it was 
when she was off the show. It was the exact year she was off the show, and the scene. That's unbelievable. And the scene <laughs> with her, and so. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, maybe you'll get a second chance. You never know. You've been on quite a few soap operas, so. <laughs> yeah, I like soap work. I, I like soap work. I, it's very it's yeah. scary though, because it's fast. It's fast. Yeah. You have got to be focused. The focus is really intense. You, yeah, I've heard that about soap operas. You got to be on your game. Yeah. All the time. And there's no, like I said, there's no second take. You've got to have everything down and and ready to go. So, yeah, you know, my first, one of my first jobs was b besides Mr. Belvedere was General Hospital. And I was just so excited to be on that show. You know, I played, oh, yeah. I played Mrs. Talbot's maid. And so I was on the show for four months and then Mrs. Talbot died. And I was, she was killed. Okay. Not in real life, on the show. Right, yeah. <laughs> right. I'm around going, the maid did it. Keep me on the show, you know. <laughs> yeah. You don't need her maid if she's dead, you know. So. Right. Oh, that's heartbreaking. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, so yeah, we mentioned the workshops that you're teaching in Chicago, and you're going to be doing. How do you find time to sleep, by the way? <laughs> because you're all over the place. And you know what? I, I compartmentalize. Yeah, because I mean, you're acting and you're you're teaching these workshops, and I noticed that the workshops you're you're essentially teaching all ages. Yes, yes, yes. I have a, a younger kids class. I had a kid all the way down to eight years old. So the first class was eight to like eleven, and the second class was like twelve all the way up to sixty-five. Yeah. So is awesome. it different teaching the younger kids than it is maybe like the teenage group or the young adults? No, because the, the techniques like a puzzle, like a puzzle. So mm -hmm. um, it's, and it's interactive. So I have them working on the scripts as we're going through each of the guidelines. So they're really involved and they're like sponges, you know? And so I'll yeah. say, one of the guidelines is what do I want to make you understand? And I say to them, okay, what was I trying to make you understand today? And they would just spew back the guidelines, like bam, bam, bam. I'm like, oh my God, to be a sponge like that again? Wow. Yeah, and to have that kind of focus. Wow, really fantastic. <laughs> you know, I have a lot of kids on, on TV shows, you know? Yeah, um, well you had, you had three at one time on Every Which Way, right? Yeah, I had three kids on Every Which Way, um, and then, you know, uh, there was Lauren Taylor that was on Best Friends Whenever, and she started out on Richie Rich, and she had zero credits. Yeah. Like, none. And so Paris Barrock, um, who did Lab Rats Elite Force and Mighty Med, and she's on another show now, she had no credits. Wow. I coached her all <laughs> the way through the network on the first show, and there it was. Yeah. Isn't and, it and, your your, and your technique is even being taught at um, – the University of Kansas, right? Yes. Yeah, and and, um, and through the Aaron Sorkin program for several years, I when they came to Los Angeles, um, I was teaching the technique when the Syracuse University students would come to Los Angeles. So that was cool. Yeah, that yeah. is amazing. Well, I read I read something or heard something that in your twenties you had a manager who kind of helped you out with like the marketing aspect of your career, really helped your career. Um, so do you think that the LinkedIn technique would have even happened had it not been for this woman? Um, I think that my understanding of the business, cause, cause it was because of her that I became a manager for nine years. I haven't yeah. been a manager for like not eight, another nine years, but I was a manager for nine years. I started Adam Brody's career all the way up to the OC. Yeah. Um, yeah. If it wasn't for her. I don't think. I would have understood how to how to help people with their business aspect of their business because she was such yeah. a business. Um, but it, if it wasn't for Harry Master George, I don't think I would have created the Linden Technique. And Harry, he's a famous teacher out here. Yeah. He's Ray Liotta. He was Ray Liotta's teacher. And um, he's Evelyn L. Fanning. And um, uh, he, that's he's their teacher. And so... Yeah. He, taught me his biggest thing to me that that is the spine of the Linden technique is that um, the story always comes first and it's from the writer's perspective not your perspective and yeah. so 
funnel to funnel the writer through you and not act like a director. If you're going to act like anybody besides an actor, act like a writer. And um, and my biggest weakness when I was growing up was reading comprehension. And so now it's my biggest strength. So if you have a problem with reading comprehension, then you're not going to read it the way it's written. And so he was extremely influential for me at that time. Mm -hmm. And Rachel K, which was what her name was, she owned Trans World Management. She was the greatest manager I ever had. And I was through, through like 12 managers before her, I think, or eight or nine. But she transformed my entire career. And, and I tell people all the time, it, you know, it's not a manager that's in a great looking building or, or uh, everybody's looking on client lists and seeing the clients they have. It's the manager that's the most passionate about you. Yeah, they're gonna yeah. work the hardest. And it translates. When she, mm -hmm. when she was picking up the phone, it, it would translate. When she was pitching me, it would translate her passion for me. Right, yeah. You know? And you, you uh, actually, go ahead. No, go ahead. I was just gonna say, you actually took her name when you started your management business, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's almost like having <laughs> a child, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> first name. Yeah, because I couldn't go under the, an actor, so so I, I pretended to be Rachel Gold. I talk like this, you know, I talk like that. That is so funny. Yeah. <laughs> we ended up representing, like, Virgo Constantine. I was negotiating. I, I negotiated Brandon Baker's contract when he did Mowgli with Disney. He had a 3 Yeah. Deal. I'm like, what? <laughs> but I left because my career was not, I mean, I was, became this manager. I didn't want to do that. So as a teacher, yeah. I get to, to, to direct, I get to act, I get to write, I get to do everything as a coach. But as a manager, yeah. I just wasn't able to, to do anything else. Yeah, and you, it's probably more rewarding, I would have to assume. You get to see the fruits of your labor better. Uh, it, you know, it, I would say that teaching to me, teaching this technique and seeing the light bulb that goes off in, in their eyes where they go, wow, I totally get it now. And I see mm -hmm. the possibilities and I see the hope for my future. Uh, it's, yeah. it's better than acting. So, I mean, people ask me, Time, like, do you which one do you prefer? And I have to say, there's nothing like teaching. Yeah, that's amazing. Well, let's talk about Chloe's song on that note. Yes. Uh, no pun intended. Uh, <laughs> this started because you were trying to help a student to get a demo reel or add to her demo reel and get her SAG card, correct? Exactly. So what happened was it started out as just a scene, okay? Because she needed yeah. a scene, needed a scene for her reel, and then we were like, "Yeah, but there's a weakness in your package because you don't have a sad card." So yeah. we're like, okay, well then, why don't you just write a couple more pages, and then a couple more pages became a couple more pages, a couple more pages, and then it became like like twelve pages, <laughs> and then we had a short, and then yeah. she. Her name is Jessica Espondiari, and she has, um, and she's actually at the Lemley Music Hall 3 right now, figuring out the situation with the screening tonight, making sure that our film's going to play properly. But anyway, yeah. so she ended up getting her set card, but she also learned how to negotiate contracts. She produced yeah. the whole thing. You know, of course, I helped her, but she did everything. Yeah. I directed, I casted it with all my people. And um, and she got the music, and we edited it together um, with Video Solutions with Phil over there. And we sat down with him, and she learned the editing process. So she learned how to how to get her sad card, how to write, how to produce, how to edit, how to do music. She learned everything. It was like it was a great experience for her. And now this is our second festival that we're in, and now she's up for Best Actress in the Movies Up for Best U.S. Short. That is amazing. It just kind of took on a life of its own. Well, you know, she's very ambitious. She's very she's very um, strong-minded. Uh, she just didn't know where to put it. And so basically, I funneled it for her. Uh, yeah. Life coached her in a way, career consult yeah. her, and gave her direction. 
And so all of you guys out there who are complaining about not getting a SAG card, well, then, then you know, stop doing video games. Get it, get, get yeah. your butt out there and make it happen because it can happen for you too. And it yeah. didn't cost that much. And now with Indiegogo and all those, I mean, we didn't do a raising money thing. Um, yeah. Uh, but but now with uh, all these people, with all these ways to raise money, there's no excuse. Right, there really isn't. Yeah. And if you can get your if you can get your SAG card from from making your own projects, it's it's opened up a whole new world for that. I think so. And now she's got it. She's got incredible um, footage on herself too, and she yeah. gets. To work out in front of the camera, which is what I tell my people all the time, that I'm not interested in classroom actors. I'm interested in actors that are out there doing it, you know. Yeah. Um, and she's one of them. And I, I just worked with um, Lizzie Cohen and Anna Kobo, and I did the same thing with them. They wrote a script, I directed it, and, and pushed them in the direction. And, and so their paperwork is going, and they're editing now. That is amazing. Yeah. That's amazing. And then with all this technology. Yeah. It's t t exactly. And web series, you know? I mean, yeah. easy to do a web series. If those YouTubers that are making these crazy content, you know, there's one guy that's pouring shampoo on people. Did you see that one? I haven't seen that one yet. <laughs> He's pouring shampoo. Okay, get this. He's pouring shampoo on people at the beach when they're – when they're in the water, when they're washing themselves down, so he's praying yeah. by pouring shampoo on them. So as they're white, what they're they're sudsing up, and so then they're trying to get it off, and then he pours more, and they're and he's basically driving them insane until he comes back yeah. and says, "I've been pranking you, sorry." You know? Yeah, <laughs> millions and millions of views, millions. That's, that's a little ridiculous. <laughs> I think it's a little ridiculous. But he's making money. He's making money. Yeah, he is. He's making well, money. He's making a name for himself. He's out there. I have, hey, bro, I got respect for you. <laughs> <Seriously. yeah. laughs> well, it's, it's like the, the person who, like, who unwraps the toys and all the kids have gone crazy for these videos on YouTube. They're just, they're just unwrapping toys and putting them together. I'm not even sure they're putting them together. I think they're just unwrapping them. And kids are mesmerized by that. And it's, I'm like, how, how does anyone come up with this stuff? You know, as far as I'm concerned, uh, it's a, a great form of expression. It gives me a, a, an education as to what's making people laugh today. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, how, why are people tuning in? You know? Yeah. Um, I have this client, Peyton Shaler, who is just a, a beautiful singer. She's going to be releasing her album. And when I was talking, I was helping her with her interviewing skills the other day. And she was naming some shows. And I was asking her, so why are they so famous? She goes, well, they're hot. I'm like, well, what else, Peyton? <laughs> and I'm like, well, it's more different than my generation. Or the yeah. generation that loved J Justin Bieber. Yeah. That we put up on the wall. Yeah. So yeah, now they true. see them on YouTube and and they think they're funny and hot. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> they're not even watching TV, those kids, though. They're not even watching TV. Yeah. They're watching YouTube. So that's why and my that's show is going on YouTube. Yeah, and that's the thing, you know, but I think that's one reason that the web series are beginning to take off because this generation coming up, they're watching everything on the web. They're watching everything on, on Netflix or Hulu or Amazon Prime or just YouTube, basically. They're on so, their phone watching it. They're on their phone watching it, exactly, and it's with them all the time. Yes. It's not even a big screen. <laughs> no, it's with them all the time, and it's, yeah, you're right, it's not a big screen. And then um, there's, there's Go90, which is a new thing. Everybody's into Go90. Go but 90, you know, have, you, have you heard of that? Okay. I have not heard of oh, Go90. You get with it, girl. You yeah, get with yeah it. I'm going to have to get, yeah. <laughs> you, you really... You really have to watch it or you will get behind because there's something new all the time. 
Well, fortunately, I'm I'm with kids all the time. Right. I'm, so you hear about these things. So I'm yeah, teenager. I'm still trying to figure out Snapchat. So <laughs> I don't know. That's just one more thing. To do. <laughs> yeah, one, one more app to download and one more technology to learn. Exactly. Um, so, Tonight, as you mentioned, you're going to be walking the red carpet, and this is for Chloe's song. It's going to be at the Love International Film Festival in Beverly Hills. Yes. Yeah, that's exciting. My outfit and everything. Yeah. <laughs> it's by <it's my> guess. <laughs> <laughs> yes, so when people ask you what you're wearing, that's what you have to say. <laughs> by guess. Yeah. But hair by Fantastic Sam's. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, and you made this movie uh, through your production company, I Am Enough, and you actually own the trademark to I Am Enough. Yeah, I do. I own the trademark yeah. to that, so you guys, don't don't be putting it on any sweaters or hats or anything. Yeah. I put it on a ring the other day, and I'm like, uh, I don't own that. It's so interesting. Trademarks are interesting. But yeah, yeah. I do own I Am Enough, and because I believe that everybody needs to feel enough to do anything. Yeah, and that's why you wanted to name your production company I'm Enough. That's right, I Am Enough Productions. I love yeah. that. I directed another film called Dice, and the reason why I did that is because it's it's got a, a real edgy element to it, um, and so they're they're editing it now too. Um, yeah, I would love to direct a feature, and I think I spoke to you about Odessa the last time I talked to you two years ago. Can you believe? Yeah, it? I know. I can't believe it's two years. Crazy. But, um, but again, I'm still um, working on making Odessa, and I hired um, yeah. Valerie McCaffrey to cast it. Um, she's wonderful, and, um, and I'm meeting with investors now, and so um, I'm hoping that that's going to be my first feature that I direct. Yeah. I'm glad you brought that up because I, I wondered what was going on with that because I knew that you made the, the short, but that you were trying to make the movie. Yeah, there's so many different ways to make a movie. You can get a star attached, you can get money, you can do both, you could sell territories and you know, I just um I just think it's a relevant film about forgiveness and about love and about redemption and so I think that's really important today. And so it's yeah. very relevant. Um and it's an urban film. So um I'm hoping this is my Rocky, so well, Yeah. Most interesting. <laughs> <laughs> it could be. You never know. You never know. And you know my and uncle. It's in your blood, so. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah, your your uncle was the executive producer of Rocky. Yeah. He's also he also did the Defiant ones on HBO. So I hope you guys can catch that. It's it's beautiful about the relationship with Jimmy Iovine and Dr. Dre. Oh, okay. okay. On HBO, it's an amazing documentary. It's a four part documentary. It's incredible. And yeah. so, yeah. yeah. You brought up your uncle. So is it true that you used to sell some of your, your uncle's wife's oh and stuff? Oh, my God. I can't believe you're saying that, Paula. <laughs> okay. He used to be married to this Beverly, Beverly Hills, very rich woman, but he they had a lot of money during the Rocky stages, too. But anyway, yeah, he had a whole room filled with stuff that she wore once. And I, when I came out here, I was struggling. I had three jobs at the yeah. time. I was struggling. And so yeah. she would be like, hey, listen, why don't you just fill up some bags in, from anything in my room and do what you want with it? So they were like Louis Vuitton belts. And then, and so I used to go to places <laughs> and sell it. And it would pay like my phone bill, my utility bill, you know, um, and that's, uh, that's how I, that was like another job. Yeah. yeah when I, that like, yeah, was pretty genius. I was like 21 at the time. Yeah. 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 Where well, of course, that? How did you find out about that? That's funny. I think it was one of the, one of the radio interviews that you oh, did. Oh my God. Uh, Gee, you got to was I what just, you say. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. You never know. You never know when it's going to come back. Well, no, I think that's genius. Then you're good. Then you're good. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's I think it's genius that you you had that kind of uh, initiative and and you were clever enough to say you know what this is gonna pay some bills and 
There was, and this, this was before eBay, so exactly. There was this lady that had this store actually in Studio City, but you you had to go in the store knowing that you were gonna just dig and dig. So you didn't wear good clothes. You had to like dig to find stuff, and you would yeah. sell her clothes. And she she'd say, okay, write on a piece of paper. She'd tear a little piece of paper. Okay, write on a piece of paper. How much do you think this is worth? And you'd hand it to her. She'd look at. It. And she'd cross it out, she'd write a number, she handed it back, you would cross it out, you handed it, and you went back and forth until you all, you both came up with a number that you felt was fair for yeah. the clothes that I was giving her. Crazy. Yeah. Crazy. And, and these were designer clothes, obviously. Designer clothes, designer uh, accessories, so. That's what she had that's there. It was, it was everywhere. But it wasn't nicely yeah. put up in racks. You had to dig to find. Right, yeah. <laughs> that's my, I, I love that story. I think I think that's a great story. So <laughs> I'm glad that you brought up your uncle because I debated about bringing that up, but when you brought him up, I was like, "You're I like, uh, yeah, you're such I'm a like, lawyer. You're such a lawyer. <laughs> well, you opened it up for me, so you opened it up. I'm slam dunk it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you opened up the door, so I had to. <laughs> I had to take the opportunity. Hey, I'm, I'm fine with that. Yeah. yeah. Well, I think it's a great story. <laughs> hey, you are doing an on-camera intensive workshop, and I'm guessing this is already full. Um, we still have a couple of spaces left. Yeah. Oh, really? Wow, I'm surprised. Yeah. Um, I'm keeping it small because um, um, I'm going to work the technique with them on the camera. They get to see what they look like when they start and what their performance looks like after they're using the technique and how much stronger they are. And then we're going to break for lunch and then we're going to watch it and analyze it and, and talk to them about how much movement. A lot of people move too much. They move too much when, and like nobody moves on television, but they're busy going like this and this. And so if you don't look like you're on television and you don't act like you're on television, then you're not going to be on television. And people don't realize that they're doing it until they go back and rewatch something yeah, like that. And and so I think the on-camera class is good so then they can watch it. Because I can always tell people, listen, keep your hands on the page or stop moving. You're distracting me from you. Or yeah. you're putting me away. The whole philosophy is, is that you're powerful enough for me to come to you. And yeah. so they'll make me come to you. And so um, if you keep going like that, I won't come to you. Yeah. That's yeah, that's good advice. So you're doing this one on Saturday and then you're doing another one in October, right? Yes. Yes. Yeah. So, so if you want to sign up for that, just go on go to the lindentechnique.com and go to the store and you'll find it. Yeah. Yeah. You have a new website now, I noticed. It looks great. I know. You know it took forever, but it's like yeah. oh, it's so nice. You know, my office manager Tracy is so grateful because <laughs> Now, now they just um, sign up online, which is really cool, and buy products online. And, you know, yeah. it, life's so much easier, but it took forever. My TLT Access site is getting a reboot. Um, I, one of my fabulous students, Stephen Stone, is 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 uh, redesigning it, and I'm going to be calling it the Actors Toolkit. Oh, okay. Um, because it's just, it's, it's, or toolbox or toolkit. I don't know. It's, we're still discussing it. Yeah. <laughs> but all the content <laughs> is on there. I mean, I'm coaching like 75 people on there. And you guys, who's ever listening, go to tltaccess.com. You get a free month just for being part of Paula's life. <laughs> so. That's a great deal. <laughs> yeah, you get a free month. And there's like, I'm, I'm. Oh, wow, there's articles on there. There's motivational minutes. There's just a ton of stuff on there. And then there's yeah. like me beating you up for hours if you want, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Lectures on the technique on business. Um, I'm interviewing branding experts. It goes on and on. And I also yeah. have lectures about the technique on there, probably like eight or nine hours of lectures about the technique. Wow. You don't even need yeah, me, if, you know? Even though yeah. I like to be there. But you actually yeah. need me to be there because it's there for you. Yeah. You've, you've done some amazing things to help people uh, with their careers, getting access to you, to your technique, to your knowledge. 
that you've amassed over the years with your 100 credits? <laughs> <laughs> well, moving forward, let's keep fingers crossed that I'm going to start directing features and that the Linden experience has a, a trillion people watching and it gets a show and, and that's where I am. That's where I am. And yeah, I, I can't wait for that. I think that's going to be great. Oh my God. My mom's in it. My dog. Oh, <laughs> oh that's so cool. Oh, it's going to be awesome. <laughs> yeah. So, so tell me about the pilot boot camp you're doing next month. Oh, thank you for bringing that up. Um, mm -hmm. What we're doing is, is uh, it's like, it's four days where um, I direct you into doing a demo. We shoot the demo. Uh, we bring a photographer, you shoot two looks. Um, I help you with the two looks. I, I, I put together your entire business package and then um, a bonus day outside of the four days is I send it out to the 90 plus agents and managers that are on my list that sign people up and you help get you an agent and manager. But I don't send out packages to help get people agents and managers and managers unless they have a comprehensive package. So if your package is not matching your talent and you're frustrated, then you should mm -hmm. sign up for that boot camp because it's yeah. four, days, four days of me working with you to build a beautiful package. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, it's $2,500 unless you sign up by the 31st of July and then you get $250 off, right? I'm giving that away, really? What is that on your website? <laughs> now, it's out there. <laughs> well, guys, you better jump in fast. <laughs> That's, funny. That's still a really great price, though. Like, uh, yeah, because, you know, you're talking about top-notch video people. We're going to write the scene. Um, I'm going to give you a partner. I'm going to direct it. Uh, you, you get two shots, which I'm going to lead you through of, um, of characters that you play on, that you could play on TV to, uh, and I have a great photographer and, um, and, and you got great sets. I mean, if it was me, I would sign up. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, if I needed it, I would have signed up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's, it sounds like a really great opportunity for a lot of actors. So are there limited spots available for that? Yeah, I'm only taking 10. You're only taking 10, so everyone needs to move fast because I'm yeah, sure it's no, going to fill up quickly. Yeah, because I really want to concentrate on each scene, and I want to concentrate yeah. on making sure that the package is exactly what you're selling on television. Yeah. So a lot of shoot pictures, but they're random pictures. And so yeah. we're, we're going to get really specific. That's good. And then with a small class, you're going to get more one-on-one -on -one attention. So you can't, you can't put a price on that. Thank you for saying that, Paula. I love you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. You can't put a price on that. You can't put a price on that. <laughs> Paula's right. I should have been a salesman. <laughs> yes. You have, as you mentioned, the audiobook now, the Linden Technique. I think it's extended and un extended and unplugged now. Yes. It's so you can get that on iTunes, yes. Amazon, Audible. Yes. And there's also, I guess there's also an ebook they call it Whisper Sync. And so there's an ebook that you can get with it. So you could actually read the ebook and listen to the audio and it matches up exactly at the same time. Oh, I love that. Yeah, that's a well, good idea. I think it's a great learning tool. And it's not, yeah. I think I think the audio is just $4.95 or something. And the ebook yeah. is kind of like $7 or something. Um, so you can study it together. Um, mm -hmm. And what's great is that everybody's in their car now. Yeah. And so I have a lot of actors that listen to the audiobook on their way to their audition because it encourages them and it gets them all pumped up. Yeah, it's something that they can have with them all the time. And, and I know that you encourage actors who are, um, when they go into an audition, to like put their headphones in or something, just tune everyone in the room out. So, you know, maybe they could listen to that while they're waiting to go into the room. I think so because you know so much of not booking a job is the psych out. You know, I mean, if you look at yeah, something, yeah, yeah. 
register, oh my God, that person looks perfect for the part. Well, then you just gave it to them. So yeah. just yeah. go on at that point, you know? I, I tell the story where I, I saw this woman on a couch in, um, in a comedy audition. I was like, why is that woman on that couch in this room with a bad face on while I'm trying to be funny, right? Like, why is she here? Well, the moment that yeah. I recognize the woman is the moment I should have just said, um, thank you very much, I'm going home now, right? Yeah. You, took, you took yourself out of the scene. Exactly, I just gave yeah. the opinion to the woman. Yeah. It became her audition, so so in that case, I didn't have a strong enough jump off. Um, my um, The person that I was talking to in the scene wasn't strong enough, my environment wasn't strong enough. So I wasn't doing my own technique, Paula. Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah, right. It, yeah, and you just proved your point that it technique couch. works. Yeah. So, I mean, it's tedious. I don't even like doing it, but hey, if you do yeah. it, you do it well. So. Yeah, exactly. And, uh, of course, you can still get your book in hard copy. So you can get yeah. that at Amazon and different places like that. And on your website as well, thelindentechnique.com. I actually have the link to that under this video. So... I've got that up so and people can find everything on that website now it's oh, it's awesome. It's, awesome it's it's really great well I, Amy I think that that's pretty much all of my questions unless you have something you would like to add oh, do we have to go I feel like we have to like have some lunch or something yeah we do we have to do something <laughs> we, need to, we need to definitely do one of these before two years so oh, crazy we don't need to oh. let another two years pass by well, I just want to tell you, thank you so much, and, you're, and you look fabulous. Oh, well, thank you. You look fabulous, by the way. Yeah, and I'm loving the necklace. Oh, my goodness. Isn't that fun? Isn't that fun? Yeah, I'm I love it. Big necklaces now. My mom makes necklaces, so she always... Yeah, she does. Yeah, so she always furnishes me with beautiful jewelry before any event, so... Yeah, I love it. It's gorgeous. Tell her your mom that she is very talented. Yes, yeah, so if anybody wants a necklace, you know, inbox me, guys. Yeah. I'll let you get one and she could show you what she's got. Yeah, I love it. Yeah. <laughs> and so lately, I mean, and in the Linden experience, she came by and she, uh, of course, I put her in the show too, but, uh, yeah. but she yeah. put necklaces on me throughout the whole thing. And she's bringing yeah. necklaces tonight for the red carpet too. Oh, how fun. I love that. <laughs> And I, I'll be sure to contact you when I'm in Tennessee in September. Yeah. Guys, if you live in Tennessee and you want to learn the technique, um, send me a message on Facebook and I'll, I'll put you in touch with the right people that are putting together that, that workshop in Tennessee. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, please, please do. And please keep me up to date on anything you find out about the Unmiracle and, of course, yeah. your YouTube series and everything. So. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Okay, Amy Linden, thank you so much for stopping by. Good luck tonight. You guys have fun. Oh, my goodness. Thank you so much, Paula. Yeah, anytime. Anytime you want to come back, you just let me know. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Bye. Bye.